game number three. And game number three is something with water, and it is, oh yeah, these are exactly the islands that the players were talking about, and it's going to be in the end a 3v3, so not even the 4v4, and a lot of Vikings in here. So that's a triple triple Viking from NCs, whereas we ends are going for double Vikings and Japanese for a bit of diversity, and I definitely like that, because you have already seen that going all in Vikings, rather all in one civilization, is not working all that well, as maybe somebody would be thinking. It's almost looking like that actually almost everybody would be thinking that it's all that great, but there is actually a reason why it isn't meta, why it isn't played anywhere else, even without any kind of rules. It's just one trick pony, and it's so easy to counter. If you are going to be going, if you are going to figure out the counter strategy to it, it's going to be just too easy because they are absolutely unable to do anything else. And well, that's of course a pretty big problem in any strategy game, especially in Age of Empires, where counters are pretty strong. So let's see. Let's see, let's see. The Japanese is 4B and in the pocket, which is definitely a pretty huge bonus for them. So if he will be fast castling, fast castling, I'm pretty sure about it. And what is actually the bonus from the Japanese? Let's check real quick. The guy is 50% line of sight, okay, so they are going to be seeing quite a lot where to rate and whatnot, and otherwise he is having also better fishing boats, of course, so that's definitely something that he will be using in this game. Otherwise, let's check the islands in here. So, looking at the distribution of the resources, we are seeing not really all that much problem, all that much of a problem for Heimdall, who is having pretty decent position, and so he doesn't need to worry about it. Later ages, maybe the stone in Imperial is going to be a problem, but basically who happens to lose the water in Imperial is pretty much toast anyway on island, so it's not like it's going to matter all that much, but this stone is quite sucky, quite sucky for Milo, and yeah, this might be a bit of a problem for them, as that of course will make for very hard gathering of stone, and the right on the, and, uh, sorry, the stone on the right side is also not ideal either. Moving on onto the other islands, same problem with the stone, not really with the gold, that's not really all that bad, and well, otherwise the other stone and gold is pretty much fine, or rather are pretty much fine, so I don't expect all that much of a trouble for this green island. Otherwise he's having <laughs> quite a lot of gold right next to his base on the extra island, so that's definitely a pretty nice bonus for him, and well, switching into the other players. Yet, yet again, a bit problematic stone, so it seems to be a bit of a theme of the map spawn in here, but that's pretty much it. Yeah, and the gold is going to be quite fine for all of the players, and that's much more important than the stone in the end on the map. Like islands. We are also going to, going to be looking at the fishies. So far I don't see all that much of, a, this, of an empty spot. It's to be pretty decent on the left, even though not as bountiful, but there is a bit of more of them and in here, right next to the left side of the map. And there potentially could be a bit of emptiness for the bottom player Heimdall, who could be kind of unhappy, but I'm thinking that this is going to be lasting him for quite some time, and since he has built a rock at the very bottom, he's going to be thinking that he will be gathering from there sooner than it actually runs out. A defensive dog from Milo, which is kind of expected as he's going to be fast castling, and a bit more aggressive one for Dark Knight, so he's definitely feeling it today, and hoping that he can really. He's going to be all about protecting the pocket, I'm thinking, as their opponents will be going for Galirash, all, all of them? I'm not sure. I'm halfway thinking that Pedro will be going for a, a fast castle himself, as the flanks are going to be Galirashing, which is kinda obvious, I think, as it's going to be happening from both of these players or other clans. There's also a bit of gold in the island between uh, Snay and Pedro, which is not as ideal as the island at the very top, but still not really how bad. And with the extra islands in the middle, with stone, these are going to be pretty important for dropping castles or anything some siege rams for absorbing damage from boats and yep, these are going to be playing a very huge role in the water battles in the later game. Also stone for the extra castles in here. Position of the docks for NCs is also kind of defensive. Skittle is at the back of the island, not really thinking about anything like his opponent Dark Knight. Whereas in here, or rather in here, Blue is also at the back, the same as his opponent Milo in the pocket, and the last player to have a look at is Snay who is also at the back of the island, so really, absolutely everybody is taking this quite carefully, 
as they are not exactly sure what to expect all around and you can already see the dead scout in here which is just basically to allow for some extra population limit for snay and that's nicely played and to be honest something that i don't really remember seeing all that often being done but that's definitely quite useful because really the scout is absolutely useless in here as you cannot really transport him all that much and if you are going to be landing your opponent you most definitely don't need him as a unit you are just going to be having some villages scouting a bit boat scouting as well and then the normal units like archers and such so yep not really all that much of a need for this guy on the horsey on this kind of map few villages coming up as the first ones are going to be from I'm Dark Dark Knight, Skittle and Snake, so exactly all the flanks, with VNs being slightly faster, looking at the amount of villages 22, 21 for VNs, whereas for the opponents 22 and 24. Oh, so actually Snake was able to amass quite a decent economy himself, looking at the fishing boats 5 and 6 for NCs, for VNs 5 and 4. So yet again, quite stronger economy from NCs and this could definitely be paying off for them quite nicely. So let's see. The pockets, we are so far seeing quite nice fish boom from both Milo and Pedro. 11 fishing boats, both of them, and 26, 27 villages, so yeah, literally the same in here. There's the one village difference, so potentially a bit of an advantage for Pedro. But players are right now advancing into the next ages, and where are the second docks? Milo just doing absolutely everything at the back, whereas on the left side, Dark Knight is definitely taking it quite confidently. Everything in the forefront, whereas you can see that Skittle is not really all that confident against his opponent and is having quite a lot of respect for him as he is building himself at the very back, thinking that he might not be all that strong enough to deal with his opponent in full on head fight. At the back of the island for Snake as well, same seems to be happening for Heimdall. As they are already moving with some first boats into the middle. So that's two boats here, with actually Snake still not building boats. Ah, because he just now advanced or something? Yeah, I think so. We're just now advancing, and well, he is sending the galleys just about now, so he's going to be slower than his opponent, which is of course going to cost him in galley rushing, since they are both Vikings, so they are a proper mirror. Let's see if he's going to be useful in there, and it's definitely nicely played right now by Dark Knight in the middle, because he is going a bit more into the pocket, and oh, oh, that's a shame for him. That's a pretty big shame, because he just missed all the food economy for the pocket. Oh, literally just missed. Literally just missed. And if he's going to be sending another flank in, it doesn't seem to be happening just about now. He could have basically destroyed the water economy for Pedro, and that would be pretty deadly for him, because the pockets need the extra echo on the water and if they cannot get it, well, of course, they are not going to be all that effective and all the more advantage for VNs would be resulting from that. Well, well, well. I'm not right now, I'm quite nicely set up right on the doorstep of the Orange Island, but Orange seems to be quite nicely prepared as we are right now quite closer to his home base. And this is really far away. For the reinforcements and all, you can see how long it actually takes them to arrive at the battlefield. And they are probably going to be waiting for some kind of advantageous fight. They are not going to be engaging their opponents just by no rather for nothing. And it's going to be all up to the fight at the top, where finally Dark Knight is located, where the economy from the pocket is. And he is right now killing absolutely everything in there, as he is luring, or rather forcing Skittle to join there as well, as he is not having any kind of time to go into raiding on the left. A bit of defense in here and that is definitely something that could be decided in the game on a map like this so nicely played very nicely played so far by vns and if they can survive long enough which they definitely could with mile already being the cast sledge already quite a lot faster than pedro where was actually the difference ah here Milo at 27 villages whereas pedro was going for a bit more extra release 32 so he's hoping that a stronger economy is going to be better then the faster advance into the next age. Let's see if he's right. I'm not exactly sure. Because right now he is losing a lot of echo in here on the fishing boat, so really, not ideal at all. Not ideal at all so far for NCs. A lot of boats already prepared in here. Could definitely be ruining the economy for, for example, for yellow. And well, first boats are already coming in from purple player as well, as he's moving all around the island in here. 
to the top and will be probably hoping to engage into Skittle. As at the bottom there's absolutely nothing happening really, just a patrol and literally waiting for the correct moment to engage in the battle. And maybe Orange could be also helping in here, let's see. Oh, he's running into a trap. Oh, oh, oh. oh well, this is not nice. Ah, at the last moment he's actually switching off from the right side, probably being told by his teammate who is just now engaging, or rather being engaged by Snay, and that could have been a pretty big disaster because if Dark Knight lost all those units in there in a 3-1, he versus 1, well, numbers are absolutely everything. Water battles. Kinda have that both though, so he should be careful, as the opponent's bows are kinda not that much dead. And doing a pretty good job, really. Dark Knight playing this very nicely, as he's right now taking on armies of all the players in here. And since he's right now being joined by already war guys of his opponent, as Pedro is just now researching them, of course, it is going to be applying pressure on top of their opponents. And let's see if they can continue with that, even through the cheaper galleys that, of course, the Vikings are having. So far, though, it seems like that the Vians are actually doing a pretty good job. He keep it in somehow keeping their opponents in check. Dark Knight should definitely be unhousing himself, <laughs> as it could be something that he won't want to do. And Pearl Borgal is coming up from Pedro as well, so we are going to be waiting for Castle Ages and first are being clicked yet again by VN, so he, they are most definitely a bit ahead in the economy and whatnot. Let's throw the chat of chat yet again. And looking at the economy so far, we are seeing that Milo is at 33, Pedro 34, Skittle and Snake 41, 43, whereas VNs are at 38, 39. So that's also the reason why they are advancing a bit faster. But at the same time, if NCs can really hold on long enough, they might be really able to overpower their opponent just sure through the sheer strength of their better economy. Well, that's a lot of boats. <laughs> oh, pretty good cheap shots at the very start. That was nicely played by Heimdall. Very nicely played. He was getting some good shots. But right now it means that Snake needs to be super careful and he will probably have to rethink his strategies. His strategy is just about now as his opponent is just about now ready to go for Vorgalis himself. I'm thinking that since NCs or other VNs are having a bit of an opportunity or other advantage on the water so far, I think they should really uh, somehow use it. Because I'm fully expecting that it's not going to be lasting for much longer, as the cheaper guys should be coming through for Pedro quite soon as opposed to Milo. And I would be de definitely liking for VNs to land the islands. And somehow, either at least go for Siege Workshop for some soaking up damage through ramps, or at least just or at least <laughs> right off drop the castles to help them into control of the waters in the middle because these are going to be super important for both of these clans. Yeah, war galley botkin arrow for absolutely everybody with the same build orders and such. Right now pretty stronger fishies economy. For a VN, so Smile is having 17 fishing boats. Uh, Pedro just now jumping into 16. He was just down to 12 or something. And yep, this is definitely pretty nice engagement for Heimdall before the war galleys from Snay are up. And well, he did get land. He did get to land some extra shots, which definitely, definitely helped him quite nicely. Well, at the top, Milo has to be careful as he was sending reinforcements through the top. But he definitely should be moving some extra army in there, which seems to be happening just about now or not. Well, it will be because yellow is all over him and blue is going to be joining in the fun as well and we are just now going to be waiting for we and Dark Knight to upgrade into War Galley as well and once that happens we are going to be entering the fighting of all the War Galleys from all six players in this map. A lot of yellow and blue right now, War Galleys from green as well, so we are going to be seeing a pretty equal fight. But um, if I had to guess, I would be actually thinking that VNs are having high, higher numbers, which is slightly curious, but probably not for much longer. Let's see. So they are just running after each other, as at the bottom there is a bit more of an engagement. Oh. <laughs> but Teal will be forced to retreat, as this is a pretty huge armada. Just a part now, prepared from Snake, and he will have to wait for reinforcements and potentially even some next ages from him.
Yeah, this is going to be just a standard fight, and there is a pretty big engagement at the top, which seems to be going for who? Well, it seems actually to be pretty equal, but I'm thinking that it should be going for VNs because of the reinforcements coming from the bottom. Yeah, exactly like that, so they should be having a slight advantage in that. And let's see, with Milo clicking into Imperial Agents, the very first player in here, and let's see how far behind him will be, for example, Pedro and the other players. So, engagement more for VNs, as was expected, because that's usually what happens in a people fighting when you are close by to your home bases, which was exactly true right now for Green. And they are pushing forward, and, well, Imperial Age is still not coming. So let's see, for Pedro, slowly, very slowly, he doesn't have the goal at all for advancing to Imperial Age, whereas Skittle is quite closer, so he will be advancing to Imperial Age pretty soon. Snay not close by at all. The Dark Knight also not at all, and last player to have a look at, Heimdall. Yeah, also not advancing, so it's going to be basically up to Skittle, which is going to be a bit of a switch of momentum. A bit unexpected to be honest, because you'll be expecting that Pedro with the strongest economy, as he should be having the strongest economy, is going to be slightly better. Slightly better than the other players. But that could be also because Milo is not the Viking, he is the Japanese. So he's having a better economy than the Vikings, and well, it is most definitely paying off, especially because of the fishing boats in here that are yeah, working quite nicely for the purple player. He's finally, he has finally rebuilt extra dogs in the forefront to have a shot through to, a, to the battlefield. And much more importantly, he's prepared for landing. And I'm expecting a middle island. This one is absolutely perfect. Right in the middle of the map with stone. And if you can drop castles about here, here literally all around the island, this is going to be so super hard for NCs to actually overcome that. So let's see. Let us see. So far, VNs are doing a pretty good job going through pocket. As <laughs> NCs are just waiting for the correct moment at the top. Double Imperial H coming from Pedro and Skittle. There is, there is, there is going to be just one for VNs. That could be yet another pretty important moment. That, But as long as the landing is going to be successful for VNs, where is he actually going? Or rather, where did he go? Ah, uh, he's here. He is, and actually, it's GG right there. <laughs> and that's a pretty fast one, to be honest. As you can see, that actually Heimdall is doing a pretty good job at the very bottom. And yet again, here you see, not even three Vikings are a good idea on a Black Island. So it's not OP at all. There is <laughs> always something that you can do against that. And you can see that the Japanese in the mix definitely did a pretty good job. And the Vikings is not an entry victory on a water map. So nicely played by VNs. From the very start, they invested a bit more into faster upgrades rather than rather than uh, into stronger economy. And it paid off quite nicely for them. So let's check the achievements. And the match is right now. 2-1 for Vikingos Nomaras, and they are just one game away from reaching the semi-finals. Nicely played indeed. So GG.